Hello, my name is Lee Taylor, and I really like to knit, so much so that some of my friends call me the Knitwit. I hope you enjoyed today's video and possibly even learned something, so let's get started. Welcome to Knit Bits number 14. We have a lot in store for this week. We are done with the stash dive from the yarn behind me. We're going to instead do a book look and go through my knitting library. We have Swatch Lab to do today. That is a slightly more complex mosaic, but still beginner friendly. We have project updates. I have a finished object and two other projects that I've been working on. And finally, we're going to take a look at a way of prolonging the onset of brain disorders such as Alzheimer's. So let's get started. We're finished with the stash dive and so to take its place we're going to do a three-part walkthrough of my knitting library and they will be broken up into general reference, stitch dictionaries, and pattern books. So the first section we're going to go over is in fact the general reference and I have three of those to show you today. I will show them in the overhead, that way it's not in mirror image and it's easier to see. I will put links down in the description um, to where you can purchase these, or at least where I got them. Um, so be sure to check down below, and as well, down below will also have the timestamps. So let's switch to the overhead and take a look at these books. The first book in the book look is a very large book. I'm having to film this one sideways, so bear with me on this one. It is The Principles of Knitting, Methods and Techniques of Hand Knitting by June Hemans Hyatt. This is a large, large book, um, very heavy, um, but it covers absolutely anything that you might uh, want to know about how to knit. Now, it uses terms that are slightly different than what other books look um, that other books use um, but you can still find what you're looking for here so we've got learning methods we've got constructing a fabric you know decorative techniques special fabrics uh, stitch and color patterns pattern designing materials and working a project and as you can see I have um, looked at a method of purling um, rather than my usual one so this is a good book to have. Um, it was a little bit pricier, but it's a huge book. Thing weighs a good 10 pounds, so it's well worth the um, price for it. Very informative. I mean, it is comprehensive and timeless guide. So again, I will put links down in the description below for where you can find this book. Next, we have The Knitter's Book of Knowledge, Complete Guide to Essential Knitting Techniques by Debbie Bliss. And this one I got more recently, um, but I really enjoy it. It's set up a little bit differently. It's almost set up like a field guide, and I really like that. And it's got very good colored descriptions of stuff that you would be doing. And I just really enjoyed this, some color values, some, so some slight color theory. And uh, just an all-around good book to, to have on hand. Again, all um, links to projects where you can buy the books are down below. Lastly, we have The Manly Art of Knitting by Dave Fogner, F-O-U-G-N-E-R. Apologize if that's your name and I have mispronounced it. Um, it's a, just you know a very simple, you know, I think I read this whole book cover to cover in like 30 minutes. Um, just some very simple, you know, how to fix drop stitches, um, what happens if you split a stitch? Some slight projects like, let's see here, like knitting a saddle blanket for a horse, um, you know, knitting a dog bed, a rib cap, you know, just some very, very, very basic things just to get you started. And um, I actually found this one at Barnes Noble. I have not been able to find this one online. Um, so if you can, please let me know and I will add this link to this video for future viewers. So that is the first look of my book looks. And again, this was the general reference book section. 
In a previous video, we took a look at how to do the very basics of mosaic knitting, where you're just knitting stripes across and you're slipping the stitches that you don't want to work. This video, we're going to go a little bit more in depth on that and knit an actual pattern rather than just, you know, a little almost checkerboard. And one point that I want to make sure that I explain very well, even though it may seem obvious, you cannot slip a color that is not already there. And that sounds very obvious, but when it comes to designing mosaic patterns, that can get challenging very quickly, especially if you want to mirror the image. Um, that's challenging, at least for me. So let's go ahead and switch to the overhead and take a look at knitting some mosaic. So grab some needles and two colors of yarn and let's get started. In today's swatch lab, we're going to be knitting a mosaic pattern together. Uh, it's this one here. And you'll notice these rows are marked, you know, blue, white, blue, white, blue, white. And I simply use a highlighter on this graph paper simply to denote my uh, contrast color versus my main color. Um, it just so happens that today we're knitting with blue and white. So these will line up perfectly, but this would work in any sort of pattern, um, any sort of yarn color combination. Now, as I mentioned, you can't slip a color from a row below where there's not one already there. So let's take a look at what I mean by that. And so let's take a look at this row right here. Okay. We're working a blue row right here. And we've got white below us. Okay. That's what we had just worked. So we're knitting along. And let's say I want a white stitch right here. Okay, I can't add a white stitch because I'm working on blue yarn and it's blue below. So I can't add a white block there because I only have blue coming this way and blue coming up in that column of stitches. Okay, so I can't just add the opposite color of what I'm knitting across unless it's there below. So now that I've gone over that, let's use this pattern and knit along together. I've went ahead and done the cast on and knit a couple of sections. I've got markers here to denote where my selvage stitches are. So that's what the red is. And then the green is simply to mark where the repeat is. So there's 11 stitches in this section and 11 stitches in this section. I'm sorry, nine and nine, because as our pattern shows, we need nine stitches to go from this edge of selvage to this edge of selvage, okay? So the repeat is nine stitches wide. So let's go along and knit and we are on the blue row. So I'm going to place this up here so we can see it together. Okay, we're on this section right here. This first row is blue and I even have it marked. I have the rows marked over here. So we're going to be knitting across and we're going to put our selvage. This shows three stitches. Um, and in the pattern that I was working, it had to be three, but in our case, there's only going to be two. So let's go ahead and get rid of our, move our white yarn out of the way. I, I've done all of the very basics of mosaic knitting in a future video. So I'm going to just kind of gloss over and move along pretty quickly on this one. Um, slow enough that you can keep up and go with me but not so much as to slow down for viewers who already know what's going on, okay? So if you're new to mosaic knitting, please check out that first video. Okay, so I've knit my two selvage. We're always going to knit the selvage, regardless of what color it is, regardless if it's right side or wrong side, we're always going to knit the two outside stitches. So our pattern shows the very first stitch that we're going to work is a white stitch. Okay, we're knitting with blue, so that means we have to come along and slip that stitch as if to purl. Okay, because we're not working it. We're just basically ignoring it. Our next two stitches is blue. So our next two stitches we work, we will knit with our blue yarn. Again, this could have been orange yarn and yellow, and the orange would have been our dark color. It just so happens that it it worked out this way. So our, we've worked, we've slipped one, knit two, now we're going to slip one. OK, 
Okay. Next, we're going to knit one. So then we knit one. And now we're going, after the halfway point on this pattern, you're going to do the opposite of what you did here. So now we're going to slip one, knit two, slip one. So that way it's symmetrical across the repeat section. So we're going to slip one, knit two, and slip one. Okay. Now we have done what is in the sections of the repeat. Now then, that so that's our nine stitches that's in this repeat section. So now we're going to just switch, you know, move our stitch marker over, okay? And now we're on this new next section of repeat. So what we do with that is we just simply come back to this first block on the repeat section of the selvage. So we just come back to here and we're just gonna work that section back all over again. Okay, so we're going to slip one, move our stitch marker out of the way, knit two, one, two, slip one, knit one, two, nope, I'm sorry, see, I'm getting ahead of myself. So we've slipped one, that's this stitch right here. We've slipped one, knit two, slipped one, knit one. So now we slip one, knit two, slip one. So we slip one, knit two, one, two. Now we're going to slip one and we are done with our repeat and we're to the selvage stitches. So we're going to knit those selvage stitches. Now, when I first did the mosaic on that earlier video, I did it all in garter. This time we're gonna work it in stockinette. And that's just as simple, you're going to be purling on the wrong side row. So again, our selvage stitches are always going to be knit. So let's get those knit. One, two on the selvage. Okay, now we're gonna slip our marker here. Now we're gonna bring the yarn to the front, just wrap it around. And if it's white, we're going to slip it. If it's blue, we're gonna purl it. So we're just gonna slip that one with the yarn in front, purl. Any that are blue, and we're going to slip any that are white, making sure to not pull that tight because you don't want your fabric to pucker. So make sure you, you leave a little bit of extra there in between. Slip, purl, all the blue. Slip the white, slip our marker, slip the white. So you got two stitches there, so make sure when you bring this over, you leave a long enough float there so that way that doesn't pucker, okay? And you know, if you need to tug that down, I find that that helps. And I tried to take the yarn to the back. I don't need to do that. Keep it in the front when you're slipping on the wrong side row when you're purling. Slip, purl, Purl, slip. Okay, now we're to the selvage. So now we do take the yarn back to the back, slip our marker, and knit these last two stitches. Okay. So we have now worked this first section, this first row right here. We have now worked that pattern. You work down this way, and since we're knitting flat, you work back across this way. I only mark on the odd side row because that's all I need to do because I know when I'm working back, I just follow the same row and do whatever it says. So if it's a knit, then I purl it across and if it's a slip, I'm still gonna slip it. So that gives us this right here, okay? So now on row three, we're going to be working 
white. So when there's a blue stitch, we're going to slip it. We're going to knit our way across to the next slip stitch. So it's going to be knit one, slip one, knit five, because there's five blocks there, knit one, slip one, work our selvage. Now what I like to do sometimes is I will take a pin and either in the middle section or off on one side, I will write how many stitches in a row that I knit, especially if it's a really wide section. If it's only five, then I may not do it. But I just take a, a pencil and write like five in this first block so that way I know there's five stitches that I need to work before I have to do that. So that way I'm not having to stare at the pattern every time and work, okay, knit one, knit one, knit one, knit one, knit one. I can just breeze through a little bit quicker. So let's work this next row. So we're just going to get this blue yarn out of our way. Let me flip this. I like to flip this around. Then that puts my yarn to the back and out of the way. Okay. So we're going to knit our selvage stitches, as always. Knit our selvage. Now then, the pattern says, again, we're going to knit one, slip one, knit five. Okay, so let's do that first. So we're going to knit one, slip one, we're slipping purl-wise which means we enter the stitch as if to purl, okay? Knit-wise would be slipping it this way. We don't want to do that in this pattern. So slip it purl-wise. Now we're going to knit five, okay? One, two, three, four, five, I'm sorry, I went off screen there for a little bit. Slip one. Knit one. And that has finished our first repeat, okay? So we simply slip the marker and we do the same thing all over again. So we're gonna knit one, slip one, knit five, two, three, four, and five. Then we're going to slip one and knit one. So we slip one and knit one. And knit our two selvage. And you're gonna work your pattern in that same exact manner throughout this entire pattern here, okay? And I just make a mark so I know which row I finished just at a, at a quick glance. So I've obviously worked this stitch pattern before. Um, you'll notice up here that I've got a pink with an X through there. I accidentally highlighted a stitch that did not need to be highlighted. So I just made sure to note, I do not need to actually um, knit that stitch. I need to slip it. So that way it's even with right here. It's very um, symmetrical, very balanced. This half of the pattern is the same as this half of the pattern. This half of the pattern is the same as this half of the pattern. Okay. So very symmetrical. And that's one of the reasons I really like mosaic is that it's, it's very symmetrical. So again, um, looking like right here in this white row, I just want to mention this one more time. Okay. You cannot add a blue stitch in this white row unless there's a blue stitch underneath because you're only working with one color across. So I can't add a blue stitch right here because there's not a blue stitch right here. Is that clear? Let me zoom in a little closer so you can see these marks, these squares. I can't add a blue stitch right here on this white row because there's not a blue stitch right there for me to slip. So that's a limit. That's one of the limitations with mosaic knitting is you can only work with one color across the row because you're only knitting with one color. If you need this second color, you have to slip from what's underneath. You can't add a color, okay? Just like on this blue row, 
I can't make this block right here a white block because there's no white underneath it. It has to be worked blue because I'm on a blue row and there's no white below it. So that's just something to think about as you're knitting. So I'm going to go ahead and knit through this pattern and then I will talk back with you and we'll talk about what this looks like. So again, you know, pause the screen if you want to knit along with this. So you're going to just be working this across. We're going to be knitting on the right side, slipping purl wise, and then we're going to be purling across the back, except for our selvage stitches, which we are always going to knit. So I will check back in with you here in a moment. Okay, I just wanted to touch base. I haven't knit all of it. I just wanted to show you I'm to this row right here, row 13. And I just wanted to show you what this looks like up here. So you can see, let's see here, do this right here. So right here you have the one blue, white, blue, and that's blue, white, blue. So that's where we're at on this one and then there for that one. So I just wanted to go ahead and let's just knit this row right here, row 13 together. So pause the video and work on yours if you need to, but get, get up here to row 13. I'm gonna set something up here because I got the fan on and it's trying to blow my, my pattern away here. So again, I just take the yarn that I just finished with and I just pull it around back and just hold it with a couple of fingers just to keep it out of the way. And then I'm ready to work with the new yarn and that just leaves, I'm so, so sorry on this, that just leaves this little um, spiral up the side. So row 13, we're going to knit our selvage. Then we're going to knit one stitch. Okay. Then it says we need to slip one stitch. Right here, knit two. Okay, so let's go ahead and slip one stitch. Slip one stitch, knit two, one, two. Then we need to slip a stitch, knit two, slip, knit. So slip a stitch, knit two, one, two. Slip a stitch and knit one. So we have now completed the repeat. So now let's switch our marker over. And let me readjust here. My yarn is trying to get off my hand here. So we're going to knit one, slip one, knit two, okay, because that's what it shows. Knit one, slip one, knit two. Now we're going to knit one, or slip one, sorry, knit two, slip one, knit one. So we're going to slip one, Knit two, one, two, slip one, knit one, and then we're done and we're at our selvage, so we knit these last two. One and two. Okay. Now we turn this around. And once again, we're just going to work across um, whatever the color is that we're working. We're going to work those and the opposite color. We're just going to slip as we would normally. Okay. So let's knit our two selvages. One, two. Okay. Slip the marker. Now we're going to bring the yarn to the front because we're going to purl. And we're going to purl the blue and slip the whites. So purl the blue, like so, and slip the white. Purl the blue, and slip the white. Purl the blue. Slip the white. 
pearl of blue. Slip our marker. Pearl the blue. Slip the white. Pearl the blue. Slip the white. Pearl the blue. Slip the white. And finally we pearl the blue. Now we're to our selvage, so we take the yarn to the back, move our stitch marker, and then we're going to knit these last two selvages. Okay. So we have now worked row 13. It's actually row 13 and 14, because 13 would be this way and 14 would be on the wrong side row. So let's move our pattern out of the way. Again, we just completed this right here, all the way across and then all the way back. Okay, so let's move that out of the way and take a look at what we've got here. So you can see on this, it's a lot easier to see in stockinette than it is in garter when it comes to mosaic. So like right here, this is a white row. So we know this stitch was slipped, okay? And one of the ways we can tell is that that stitch from here up to here is a lot longer than these little white stitches here, okay? And then we slip that. That's a very good one. See how much larger that is? That's because we didn't work it, so it slips and it elongates that. So you've got to be careful when you're blocking to make sure to really get those, you know, stretched out like it's supposed to be. Let's move these to the middle of my needle. And you want to make sure that your tension is right or this thing will pucker up and you won't be able to see all the work that you've done. Now, obviously, this isn't blocked, so it's going to, you know, try and curl and be all kinds of crazy. But once you block it, um, you can cover a multitude of sins with blocking. Um, so I just wanted to go over a little bit more complicated pattern. Again, we only went halfway along this one. But once you know the basics of mosaic, it's very easy. You just keep going and again, whatever the dark is, that's your contrast color and whatever the light is, that is your main color. And you just knit whichever block is, um, you just work the blocks like that. So each one of these squares, I want to make sure I'm very clear on this. Each square here is one stitch, whether it be a knit stitch or a purl stitch. Okay. And this is how mosaic patterns are shown. They're shown in a graph. Show the whole thing here again. Uh, mosaic patterns are just shown in a graph. So I just wanted to be very clear on how this is um, worked. And I just wanted to go over and work a little bit here with you. Again, once you know the basics of mosaic, you can just go on. There, there's nothing more complex. There's nothing part of mosaic that's more complicated than what we just went over, okay? It's very simple. You knit the stitches with the color that you have and you slip everything else and you knit. So you're just knitting stripes and you slip whatever stitches don't go along that stripe. It's that simple. And the sky's the limit on patterns. Just remember, you can't add a stitch. I can't make this a blue stitch because it's a white row and there's no blue directly underneath it. So that cannot become a blue stitch. Okay. You can only add color that wasn't existing when you're knitting that color. So go ahead and knit this up. I would love to see your projects as you get them. So please um, take a picture and email me. My email is in the about section of my um, channel and I would love to see your work. So that is mosaic knitting. First up in the project update section, we're going to look at a finished object or finished objects, I should say. Then we're going to take a look at two projects that I've been working on this month as my primary focus. And I'm just going to briefly cover in this section the temperature afghan I am still working on. That is my long term project of knitting the high temperature for the entire year of 2022. 
Um, so let's go look at each project section individually. Again, not the temperature I've can because I'm covering that here. But I will show you updates as soon as I have a little bit more to show. Okay, like I mentioned, I have a finished object or objects, depending on how you want to look at it. I finished the gnomes for my neighbor for her grandchildren's Christmas gifts. Um, I will put up a picture here. And so originally I was supposed to knit four, three girls and a boy, three pinks and a blue. That's what she asked for. Well, the gnome that you've seen in the back was a blue gray. And when you set them all together, the blue didn't come up, didn't show up enough. It was too gray for me. So I went ahead, went ahead and knit another gnome and I used slightly different sized needles. And as you can see, that made a vastly different gauge and size gnome. And that's okay. Perfectly fine to have wonky gnomes. As the designer said, wonkiness is gnominess. Each one is hand knit, each one is unique, and even if I knit using the exact same method every single time, each one's gonna be slightly different because the just the general tension of each project is gonna change slightly. That's just the way of doing hand knit things. I'm not a machine, I can't make everything be the exact same. And that's okay. Just as long as I enjoy my knitting, that's all that matters. This part, we're going to look at my best scarf ever. I have made quite a bit of headway on that, and I only like a little bit more on the body, and then it'll be time to work the next mosaic panel. So by the end of this month, this scarf should be complete. So let's take a look at my best scarf ever. Take a look, I don't have very much left in this uh, skein of yarn. So there's where I was when I first shown, or when I updated the video. Um, my second update and then I am up to here. Uh, these green markers here show uh, when I get to um, 50 ridges or that would be 100 rows just so I can keep count of my stitch count. It doesn't mean anything. I just like to know um, how many stitches a project has. So again I don't have much left on this skein. I am going to have to join another skein to finish the project. Um, but it will only take two of these and then just a partial of this orange skein. So making good headway on this uh, scarf and should have this done in the next week or so. A couple of days ago I cast on for the left front of my Limit cardigan, which in my brain I've just started calling my Papa sweater. Um, because it is knit in honor of my late grandfather. Um, I go more in depth on that in a future video, which I will link to down below. Um, but I have cast on, and in the overhead, you'll see how far I've gotten, and I've made quite a bit of progress. It's obviously much narrower than the back panel, so I'm able to move through much quicker. So this um, left front shouldn't take very long to get finished. As I mentioned in the overview, uh, one of this week's projects is the Limit Cardigan. This is the left front panel. I cast this on on Tuesday. I'm currently filming this on Friday, so I've had a bit of time to work on this. The yellow marker is just for me, just to keep track of where my center point is, um, because for some reason or other that seems important to me this time. Um, I do have a red marker here, over here on the edge, and that is just going to mark um, how much I had gotten done since I last updated. I'm not going to do a daily count on here, but I will be doing a stitch count, so look for some more of these markers to mark um, stitch counts so I can make sure that, one, both right and left sides match up, but that they match up to the back as well. So this is the update on the 46 Limit Cardigan. In today's bonus video, I want to take a moment and talk about Alzheimer's. That's something near and dear to my heart. Uh, my grandmother is having some memory issues here lately, and we've taken her and gotten her tested, and we're waiting to hear results back on that. So 
Alzheimer's and other brain diseases is very, like I said, very near and dear to my heart. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about that in today's bonus video, not as it applies to her, but just in general. And I've got my information just down below the camera. So if you see me glance down, that's, that's why I want to make sure I get the information correct. So is reducing Alzheimer's disease closer at hand than we thought? Well, a video published on 8-26-22 talks about some ways to reduce the chances of developing brain diseases such as Alzheimer's. They are simple activities such as crossword puzzles, learning a new language, reading, and yes, knitting. Knitting can help reduce your chances of Alzheimer's. I will post a link down in the description of that video if you would like to go take a look at that and see what other things that there is that you might be able to do to um, prolong your chances of Alzheimer's or someone that you love. This will not erase the chance of getting Alzheimer's, but it just pushes out a diagnosis if you are prone or have a family history of Alzheimer's and the like in your family. So I just thought that was something very cool to um, see that my hobby and the things that I enjoy and hopefully you enjoy can help create a better uh, quality of life. So I just wanted to share that in this week's video. In this week's video, we took a look at the first part of my knitting library. We swatched a slightly more complex mosaic knitting pattern. We talked about project updates and we even talked about slowing down the onset of brain diseases such as Alzheimer's. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something and I hope you knit along with me. So until next week's video, keep knitting.